right in front of me and I can't hear it in my ears. Oh, no, we're here for 
Things are going wrong. It's so far, but it's okay because we haven't even started the show yet. So. I'm, I'm Chris. I'm the director. It's nice to meet you. I, uh, I don't. You're not the man we hired for the camera. You know, but, I mean, ankle's good, right? Ankle's perfect. Okay. Just making sure everything's going good. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Murder at Haversham Manor, a Cornley Drawn Society production. Please allow me to introduce myself. I am Chris, the director, and I would like to formally welcome you to what will be my directorial debut and my first performance as head of the Drama Society. Woo! I would like to apologize to those of you involved in our little uh, box office mix-up. I do hope the 
50 of you will enjoy this little murder mystery as much as you would have enjoyed Six the Musical at the Emerson Majestic. Uh, we are particularly excited to put on this play because for the first time in the society's history, we've managed to find a number of members that fit this play perfectly. Uh, if we're being honest, a lack of members has sometimes hampered past productions, such as uh, last year's Chekhov play, Two Sisters, Last Christmas is The Lion and The Wardrobe, or of course, our summer musical, Cat. <laughs> of course, this is the first time that we've been able to stage a play of this scale, and we are thrilled. It's no secret to it. The lack of budget has sometimes hampered other productions, such as last year's Roll Dolls classic, James and the Peach. <laughs> of course, during the run of that particular show, the peach we had went off, and we were forced to present a hastily devised alternative entitled, James, where's your peach? <laughs> anyway, on to the main event, which I'm sure will be our best show yet. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please put your hands together. Woo! Not yet! Not yet! Not yet! Not yet. <laughs> <We're so> <laughs> For Susie H.K. Bridewell's thrilling whodunit, The Murder at Haversham Manor. He's on his way. It's 
Inspector Carter. They say he's the best damn inspector in the district. He'll crack this case and quick. Very good, sir. And what shall I do? Lock every door, man. Not a soul leaves Habersham Manor until the killer is found. I want, sir. And assemble everyone in here. Right away, sir. Good God. Charles Habersham murdered at his own engagement party. Good God. Charles Habersham murdered at his own engagement party. What a grim, grim night. Florence! <laughs> my God, you look so frail, lying there, the skin is cold to the touch. Don't touch it, Florence. I must. You mustn't. You controlling root unhand me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who could do such a thing? Night for engagement party. Cecil, wake your brother's dead. This way, Mr. Habersham. Get out, you idiots! My brother, dead! It can't be! Calm yourself, Cecil. Pour him a stiff drink, Perkins. Right away, sir. Charles always kept his scotch right there on the side table. You know, my brother had the finest collection of scotch in all the country. Don't you think I know that, Cecil? He was my best friend. He was my brother, Collingmore. Hang it all. Charlie dead. My fiance. You are to be my sight this evening, Florence. Oh my God! He's drunk the whole bottle. There's not a drop left. <laughs> there's not a drop left. Hang it all. There's another on the table. Why, yes, sir, of course, you're right. This one's full. <laughs> this is horrifying. Who <laughs> on earth would have a motivation to murder Charles Habersham? I can't imagine. It's madness. My brother was a good man. Who would want to kill him? I'm in shock, Thomas. As am I, Cecil, as am I. This is all more than my nerves can take. I simply can't stand. Thomas, I think I'm becoming hysterical. That's enough, Florence. Take one of your pills. Oh, Florence, this is unbearable. <laughs> Thomas, I fear I shall pass out. Perkins, pour that in a stiff drink. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Perkins. <laughs> Well, here's to a good brother. <laughs> That's the best damn whiskey I've ever tasted. Have another to calm your nerves. <laughs> Make it a double. Oh my Charles! My Charles! My head is spinning! Calm down, Florence. <laughs> Another scotch, sir? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't believe he sat in here alone, drinking, when he was supposed to be downstairs <laughs> with us. <laughs> Behind that cheery mask, and they got your side to the man that many didn't know about. It's true. His smile was often merely a facade. He was fortunate enough to be one of the few people he truly confided in. Damn it all, I've lost a true friend today. We all have, Perkins. Hang it, I knew Charlie ever since grade school. I don't know how I'll ever recover from this. You'll move back home with me. I'm your brother, and I'll have it no other way. Perkins is right. My brother was hiding a deep sense of melancholy and resentment. I have no doubt in my mind it was suicide! <laughs> suicide, Mr. Havisham? How can you 
say that. Of course not. It's murder. Murder in the first degree. Nonsense. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> My brother was paranoid and jealous, and I can prove it. Perkins, hand me his journal. It's there on the mantelpiece. <laughs> Thank you very much. Why, look at the last century. I fear Florence does not love me. The night of our engagement party, despair engulfs my soul. But I love Charles with all my heart. As I said, driven mad with paranoia and jealousy. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Inspector Carter, take my case. Yes, Inspector. Well, this must be Charles Habersham. Oh, I'm sorry, this must have given you all a damn shock. It did. We're all still reeling. Naturally. Now tell me, are any of you the deceased immediate family? I'm Cecil Habersham. I'm his brother. I'm Lawrence Hollymore. I'm his fiance. Tonight was our engagement party. I take it everyone is gathered here? The only other member of staff is Arthur the gardener, but I saw him at Winston meeting for the weekend hours ago. Winston? And his guard dog. I see. Have you poured everyone a stiff drink? Yes, Inspector. Well then, let's all raise a glass to the man we all loved. To Charles. Charles! Charles. <coughs> <coughs> oh, delicious. Excellent. Lovely. That's a damn fine bottle, Perkins. What's the vintage? <laughs> Flammable and corrosive, sir. <laughs> listen, listen! <laughs> you must all be distraught, but forgive me. The sooner I can begin my inquiries, the sooner we can talk <laughs> of, of this ghastly business. Miss Collymore, Mr. Habersham, if you could wait in the study while I examine the body. <laughs> it's such a tragedy for a man to die just three months before he is to be married. I can't stand it. Just look at him lying there. This is quite... Morris. Morose. <laughs> his stillness unnerves me. Seeing a cadaver for the first time can be unsettling. Check his pockets, Thomas. Inspector, I need you to put yourselves together and help me to dust his body for fingerprints. A letter! Now, to dust his body for fingerprints. What was that? Sir? I, I could have sworn I just saw him. Breathing, sir. Uh, nonsense, Collymore. This man is dead. <laughs> hey, now that I've finished examining the body, can you take it down to the service quarters for the coroner to collect in the morning? Yes, Inspector. <laughs> Miss Collymore, Mr. Habersham, if you could please return. Any ideas as to the cause of death, Inspector? It could be a number of things. Strangulation, suffocation, poison. <laughs> Before the coroner fully examines the body, I wouldn't like to say. Poison, Inspector? Surely not. I have to think about it, Miss Collymore. As soon as I've finished examining the body... Gone. <laughs> 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 
the two of us to become implicated in Charles's murder. If they find out about us, we'll be suspects. We were having an affair, so what? It doesn't mean we killed the man. Of course not, but that's what the inspector will think. It's fine. We'll just carry on. Everything is exact. <coughs> Exactly as it was, except now you will be forced to marry my beastly brother. And soon we can be <coughs> not keep any secrets. Soon, my love, but first I must ask you a question. My wife, marry me. <coughs> Charles is gone. Now nothing can come between us. <coughs> Just follow my lead. I'm sorry to have kept you, but uh, 
Now that I've finished examining the body, our interviews can proceed. Perkins, bring in Charles' personal effects. Where would you like them, Inspector? Set them down in the mantelpiece. <laughs> Not only as a butler, but as a friend and a confidant. If you need me, I'll be in my quarters. Exits. <laughs> Exits! <laughs> Thank you, Perkins. If you'd be so kind as to send in Florence Collymore on your way out. Don't be an instructor, I'm already here. Don't ask too much of me. I'm as fragile as glass. At last, Collymore, you managed to find me a pencil? Yes, Inspector. <laughs> and my notebook? <laughs> I knew I'd left them somewhere. <laughs> I'm going to have to speak to your sister alone, Colin Moore. Very well. I'll be in the library, Florence. <laughs> Don't worry, Miss Colin Moore. My questions will be brief and to the point, and then you can get some space to calm your nerves. Firstly, how old are you, Miss Collymore? Twenty-one. I will take note of that. <laughs> uh, when were you engaged to be married? In the new year. <laughs> and when did you and your fiancé first meet? Only seven months ago, but my brother has known him since school. He introduced us at a local gala, and it was love at first sight. I knew from the very first moment I saw him that he was the man I wished to marry. Ah, I've run out of paper. <laughs> when you love someone, there's no such thing as rushing, Inspector. Did you ever feel you were rushing into this marriage? How could anyone have benefited? Can you think of anyone who might have benefited from your fiancé's death? Cecil? Not even Cecil. <laughs> I wasn't having an affair! You were having an affair! Don't raise your voice to me, Inspector! Calm down, Miss Collymore! <laughs> what? Where did you find it? I found your letter. <laughs> it addressed to Cecil, written in your hands, declaring your love for him, and saying that the thought of marrying Charles repulsed you. Charles read it! Well, where did you find it? I'll tell you where I found it! <laughs> Charles Pocket! Then it was suicide. Then it was suicide. Then it was suicide. <laughs> Indeed. Or a murder conceived by yourself and Cecil Haversham so you could run away together. You diabolical beast. How can you? Excuse me again, Inspector, and you'll be sorry. What's all this shouting? What is this, Inspector? <laughs> I'm merely interviewing Miss Collymore. <laughs> Nothing more. What's the matter, Florence? Oh. <laughs> 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 
Calm down, stop shouting. <laughs> She's having one of her episodes. She's not having it here. He's never Lauren, where are you going? <laughs> Get back here this instant! <laughs> She's run off. <laughs> I'll fetch her back. You stay here, so you know, I guess the inspector has some questions for you. You were Charles's brother, after all. I'm sorry about her, Inspector. She's deeply shaken. We all are. It's been quite the night, and it's getting late. Indeed. Eleven o'clock already. <laughs> well, do you have any questions for me, Inspector? Yes, similar ones to those I asked Miss Colleen. Fire away, Inspector. I'm at your service. Indeed. See, you and your brother, did you get along? Up and down. There was rather more strain in our relationship after Father died. And it's no secret that Father loved Charlie more than myself. This is your father in the portrait, is it not? <laughs> It is! <laughs> he, he was the spinning image of Charles, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Ever since he was quite young, yes. And you were the junior by four years? Almost four. And didn't I know it. Charles patronized and embarrassed me for our entire childhood. He always thought he knew best, and father always took his side. If he ever didn't get his way, he was unbearable. He sounds like far from the ideal brother. In fact, it sounds like you hated one another. I won't lie, Inspector. We didn't always see eye to eye. But if you're suggesting that I see the truth, then you're mistaken. I see. It's a dark night to see someone. Inspector? <laughs> you can barely make out the trees. <laughs> Your brother! <laughs> Inspector, please, me and my brother have differences, but deep down we cared for one another. And yet you had an affair with this fiance. What on earth gave you that idea? Mm, this, uh, this letter I found in Charles' pocket from Miss Collymore to yourself. You knew about that? I did. As it seems, did Charles. Well, well, bravo, Inspector. You found out about Florence and I have proofs nothing. We had nothing to do with Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Inspector, he's a dangerously unhinged man. Devil of a temper. Florence is his sister. Now I've said it once before, and I'll say it once again. He couldn't stand the idea of giving her up to any man. He saw him and, and Florence together at the Nancy party, and it drove him insane. And he lashed out and killed Charles. A crime of passion, perhaps, but there it is! <laughs> Charles' initials inscribed on the cover. Let's see. Notes, bills. What's this? A newly written last will and testament dated only today. You see. <laughs> I, Charles, have 
Habersham hereby amend my last will and testament to leave my money, possessions, and have. <laughs> <laughs> To one good lord! <laughs> Inspector, Thomas Collymore for you. Thank you, Cecil, but before I question him, I have some papers I'd like to review in Charles' study. I shall return presently. Do take your time. Thomas, did you manage to find Florence? <coughs> she ran out into the grounds. I see. And what were your feelings about Florence and Charles' engagement? I was overjoyed, of course. I love Florence and I love Charles. I couldn't have approved more of the match. <laughs> Come now, Polly Moore. It's well known that you're overprotective of your sister. Transactions, but you find out who did, and you call me back. Nine thousand pounds stolen from my private savings. Good God! What a ghastly evening. Thomas, I'm afraid I have a confession to make. Hmm? Well, Florence and I are having an affair. What? <laughs> you and my sister! Oh, calm down, Collymore. You always were a snake in the grass, Cecil. It's not what you think. We're in love. My sister does not love you. How dare you lay a finger on her? Your own brother's fiancé. It's disgusting. No wonder your father hated you. Ugh. Don't speak about my father, Collymore. The time has come for you to answer to me for your indiscretions. Run! Draw your sword! <laughs> nice try, Cecil, but you're no match for my skill. You know, sometimes I forget you're Charlie's brother. You're so pathetic! I always was, too. Good <laughs> for you, Polly Mar, but still not bad. <laughs> ching, 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 swipe, slice, ah, uh, tis nothing. How about you, Collymore? Ching, 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 ha ha, yes, swipe, swipe. 
swing. You got a good parry, Dollywood. Good parry. I'll show you a good parry. I'll show you a good parry. Change, change. Slice his arm. <laughs> Seems there's no question as to who murdered Charles Habersham anymore. He was killed by his own vile little brother in a fit of jealous rage. You'll be sorry you ever laid a finger on my sister Habersham. You'll be sorry! <laughs> Killed on the 
Remember your breathing, Miss Collymore. Now is not the time for another one of your episodes. I'm having the episode. <laughs> I cannot help it. Hey, Miss Collymore, you look like you have a cold. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm
Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have enjoyed the break. Uh, we will be resuming this evening's performance momentarily, uh, I'm assured. I must say, I'm so delighted to see so many of you have returned for the second act. <laughs> Obviously, I would be lying if I said the first act went entirely as rehearsed. There were one or two minor snags which you may have not picked up on, but, but those are snags that you would expect to see in any production. <laughs> and this certainly hasn't been the worst first act Cornley Drama Society has seen by some stretch. <laughs> Just last year, due to a casting error, Cornley Drama Society had to present Snow White and the Seven Tall Broad Gentlemen. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's going quite badly, to be honest. Before we begin again... Yeah, no, she's still unconscious. We still got from the dark. Trevor! <laughs> Before we resume the production, uh, one quick word of Health and Safety Administration. Could I please ask any of you who consumed any of the little candies in the hall during the intermission to please seek medical help <laughs> immediately? <laughs> anyway, I now present to you the concluding act of the murder at Habersham Manor. <laughs> Havershev Manor. What a grisly evening. Frightful, brother. Frightful. And look, Mr. Collymore, the snowstorm outside is building! <laughs> 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 We're not careful we'll be snowed into this slaughterhouse. Indeed. We must discover the guilty person. The gunshots were heard coming from the library. I shall investigate the room. All of you remain here. This whole business is a disgrace. Now let us remind ourselves of what we know. We know that Charles Habersham was found murdered here in his own private quarters on the night of his engagement party. We know that his fiancée was involved in an affair with his own brother Cecil. How could my sister behave in such a way? Not now, Thomas. We know that he too was murdered on the same eve in cold blood. The only thing we don't know it's who the murderer is. Oh, the detective has had it. Most on. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was most <laughs> That was most ominous. Ominous. Indeed. Mr. Collymore. I must speak with you privately. Of course, Carter. I must speak with you, Thomas. At once, Inspector. Are you sitting comfortably? Most comfortably, Inspector. Before we speak, I must check that no one else is in earshot. No one else is here, Inspector. Ah. Very well. Thomas, I found the weapon that was used to kill Cecil Habersham. Good Lord, where was it? In the library, on the table. Also warm and the barrel still smoking. Someone killed Cecil with this? Yes, less than half an hour ago. But who? I was hoping you'd be able to tell me that, Colleen Moore. After all, we are friends, aren't we? I have no idea who killed Cecil. I was downstairs in the kitchen fetching my sister or some friends. Line? Uh, I don't know what page we're on. I don't know what page we're on. <laughs> Besides, why would I want to murder my oldest friend's younger brother? Perhaps because you found out about his affair with Lawrence. We all know you're a jealous man, Colleen Moore, ruthlessly protective of your sister. Protective? I approve of whatever makes my sister happy. Don't play the fool with me, Thomas. You killed Cecil tonight in cold blood, and you know that wasn't the plan. I'm going to show you something, Thomas. No doubt you'll find it interesting. Well, well, well. What is it, Inspector? A newly written last will and testament dated only today. It appears Charles has changed the beneficiary. Well, who on earth has he changed the beneficiary? Well, who on earth has he changed the no, who on earth has he changed the <laughs> Good Lord! That's right! He's leading it all to Perkins! The time has come to confront Perkins and let him know we know what he has done. Let's yes, go find him. Tell us the 
been used to hold a bottle. <laughs> it's been embroidered with the initials FC. Florence Cullen. Precisely. Arthur the Gardener, are you suggesting that Florence Collymore broke into Charles's private room this afternoon? Florence has murdered her own fiance. Miss Collymore, get in here now! You murdered Charles Havisham, and we have the evidence to prove it. How dare you, Perkins! Perkins! Thank heavens, Inspector. These two have been accusing me of the most dreadful things. You hold your tongue. We all know what you've done. Well, Winston, get back from the inspector. Oh, oh, oh. Winston, the inspector's here to help us. I'm sorry about Winston. <laughs> Arthur, I presume? I'm the longest serving member of staff here at Havisham Manor. He's been working for Mr. Havisham for 90 years. For 99 years! <laughs> 99 years! What a dedicated man! But our <laughs> I was informed you left Haversham Manor at 6 o'clock this evening. <laughs> What's that, young man? <laughs> it appears you were hiding in the grounds the night two men were murdered here. Arthur became trapped in the storm and couldn't make it to the gates. How implausible. I don't suppose you realize what you've walked into this evening, then, Arthur. On the contrary, Inspector. <coughs> fear that I've discovered a clue that will crack this case. A handkerchief? Monogrammed monogrammed. And stained with Kia <laughs> Nitty cyanide! Drop <laughs> beneath the forced window that was used to gain access to this room so someone could poison Charles. Good God, how dreadful. I must inspect this handkerchief further. Thomas, grab my magnifying glass from Charles' desk. Yes, Inspector. Florence 
Holy Moore is the murderer! Spectre! Me, the murderer? How can you? You are the murderer, Miss Holly Moore. It's plain for us all to see. You were engaged to Charles, a man according to your letter you despise. But not only that, you had an affair with his brother. It seems plausible to me you both murdered him so you could be together. <laughs>
on earth is going on? I can explain. I don't think you can. <laughs> Miss Collymore, you have arms? A second affair. Lawrence, you... changed. Your wild accusations have driven me to this. I feel dizzy. I feel like I'm about to pass out. I suggest... I, I suggest you settle down, Miss Collymore. Quickly, where's your medication? Blast, I must have left it in the study. Miss Collymore, you are a vile criminal. And to think we took you in. You have manipulated me. I let my master down tonight. All the while you were plotting your fiance's demise. Oh, Inspector, all these accusations, I feel an episode coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Perkins! 
Me, Inspector? You, Perkins. It appears Charles has changed the sole beneficiary of his inheritance. This is all a mistake. Save your... <laughs> Save your pleading for the police station. Thomas, handcuff him to the chaise long, lest he escape before I can drive him there. Yes, Inspector. That would be for hours. The snow, is that it? Heat! <laughs> <laughs> it's not true, I tell you! What's happened? I must have fainted. Curse my delegate! What happened? <laughs> I was <must> have fainted! <laughs> Curse my delicate constitution! You did faint, Florence. We've learned that Perkins committed the murder. Perkins? Perkins? But he's such a kindly old man! This is our misunderstanding! I didn't kill Charles, but I know who did it! Who? Inspector Carter! What on earth? Poppycock! <laughs> you did it, because Charles knew about the police money, you were embezzling! Nonsense! You say you met before, that he was a consultant on a fraud case you were working on! What of it? Charles found out the reason no arrest had been made is because the man committing the crimes was yourself! You were the... the the facade! <laughs> the perpetrator! You know what the perpetrator told You can't prove it! Charles could, and that's why you killed him. Never! I know your secret, Inspector. What will you do? Kill me too? I will confound it! What a devil! What a situation this is! Not so bad, Inspector! <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, you fell into my trap. You've been hiding on the grounds ever since this afternoon when you planted the poison. It was you I saw. You were that mysterious figure. I thought it was real! I thought it was serene! You got yourself quickly the terrible winner! <laughs> but what about the handkerchief bearing Florence Collymore's initials? Perhaps you should ask Inspector Carter. Or should I say, Inspector Frederick Carter? <gasps> See, oh. Same initials. Precisely. And after committing the <coughs> crime, she found Charles's will in his ledger and tried to pin the whole thing on me. You damn crap! Oh. You damn crappy devil! Crappy indeed. <laughs> Perkins here is as innocent as I am. Remove those handcuffs at once. Yes, Charles, I have the keys. <laughs> Drop the gun, Inspector. I'm me! I'm me! <laughs> Never. I came here to kill you, Charles, and I, and I won't leave until <laughs> it's over, Inspector. I can prove your guilt in a second. I have the evidence in my office. Get the papers, Perkins. <laughs> Yes, sir! Spirits! Inspector? <laughs> Never. What are you gonna do, Charles? Huh? 
You gonna kill me in a room full of witnesses? Don't think I wouldn't do it, Carter. You tried to kill me. I'd merely be returning the favor. Please, Inspector. Ah! <laughs> Please, Inspector. <laughs> you, are, you ought to be frightened. Arthur, hold everyone in this room. I'll send a wire to the police. <laughs> sundry accounts easily. Carter had access, and I had the facility to move the money and keep it secure. Or so I thought. Until on this evening, line. This set is a death trap. This set is a death trap. <laughs> <laughs> as for Cecil, that was more a crime of passion. Simple as that. Now I hold in my hand a written list of every fraudulent transaction Thomas Collymore and Inspector Carter made. Florence, it was sore than a fair baby to be sick. It broke my heart. Charlie! Look at me the way you used to look at me! <laughs> Your reading glasses, sir! Thank you, Perkins! Get the door, Perkins! <laughs> Someone for my murder, 
He intended to flee with a one-way ticket to Dover, taking every penny with him. I think it's time we look inside your attaché case, Inspector. Where we shall find... The bottle of cyanide. Thomas Collymore's 9,000 pounds. And of course, a one-way ticket to... Duran Duran! <laughs> See, Inspector Carter allowed you to take all the risk by storing the stolen money in your private account. Isn't that right, Inspector? All right. <laughs> all right, it's... All right, it's true. I forged your signature at the bank and took out every penny. I had intended to flee after I'd managed to frame someone for the murder. I hadn't intended on your account of catching on so quickly and telephoning <laughs> sir. Carter, you rogue, I trusted you. You've made a mistake here, and I'm afraid it'll be your last. No! <laughs> Bang! Oh! <laughs> Inspector left out for me. What do you suppose I did with it? Well, I don't know. Oh no! Charlie, you don't mean. Charlie, no! Lying! Just die! Just die! <laughs> <laughs> differently, Thomas. If men allow their conscience to be governed by avarice, then death and destruction shall prevail. Betrayed by my brother. <laughs> Let us hope we never again see a murder at Haversham Manor. 